Welcome back everybody. Today we're doing a video that I get requests for constantly. I get a request for this video multiple times every week and have for a number of years. Just never get around to it. So now we're going to get around to it. Uh, all we're going to do today is show you range gear, why I choose what I choose, and those sorts of things and just walk you through it. I think it's kind of an odd concept, but people, again, seem to want it. Um, so my typical loadout in the truck is, generally speaking, the same. Um, sometimes I leave targets here, sometimes I don't. Uh, they always have to come off the farm because this is a working farm, um, but I do have like a little cache point as well, and then sometimes they come home. Anyway, shootsteel.com targets. I don't have any targets that aren't shootsteel.com. They're really good. Uh, this one I only break out if we're shooting long range because it's big. So if we're out at, probably the closest I ever shoot this one is 400 yards, um, but if you guys see on the far side of the field over there where I put it up around seven, 800 yards a lot. This is the target. Other than that, I use the 11 uh, inch targets um, just across the board. I just think it's a good size for training because it's, you know, roughly human body size. So I'm gonna download these real quick so we can get into all the other stuff. The next product that I use constantly, and you guys see all the time, is the CTK Precision Rest. I actually have two of these. This one has been beat and battered um, more times than a homeless woman. However, uh, it's still going strong. I just kind of reshape it and put it back together um, and use it here on the range. Um, but this one, it doesn't look like this normally. This is probably the single most abused CTK Precision Rest on the market. Um, but I really like them for uh, the accuracy portion. Um, pretty much everything I go over here. If you guys want it, I'll put a link in the video description uh, where I can, but CTK Precision actually sent me, after seeing the condition of this in all my videos, they sent me a new one, but I, and it's perfect, it's beautiful, but that one's back at my house where I shoot uh, on the dock. So uh, I use this one still out in the range. They probably don't like that. <laughs> they probably want me to use the new one, it is what it is. Uh, Coleman Cooler, um, this is two purposes, of course, to drink water. Uh, number two, uh, to get lead off my hands. Uh, that's why I was actually wearing gloves in the beginning because I don't like to touch the targets uh, without uh, gloves on. Actually take them off now that I think about that because uh, lead contamination, if you do this you know, somewhat for a living like I do, is a very real thing. And uh, those targets at this point have all had thousands and thousands of rounds into them. And uh, the lead is a very big deal there. Coffee, there's always coffee here on the range. Sometimes I bring, uh, if you guys watch my Jackery video, I bring the power bank out there and a coffee maker and actually make coffee out here. Um, so a couple other things. This here is a shooting mat from uh, Survivor Gear. A lot of this stuff is from Survivor Gear. They make really good affordable stuff. Um, and I actually had some input onto the design of this shooting mat. Um, it's a sort of a basic shooting mat in some ways. However, it's got really good materials. It's held up really well. Uh, you guys have seen everything in here has had steel targets that are, have sharp edges thrown on top of them and driven around this field for years. So if it's still holding up, it's pretty darn good. But what's cool about this, and I don't usually use it like this, and that's because of the way I shoot out here for filming videos, but if I was to shoot for like precision, I would use this feature, but these straps here, you can actually put them out front of the shooting mat and then drive your bipod into it and you can actually get pressure on it and stabilize the rifle. So that's a really cool feature. Um, and I have several of these, so you guys I'm sure have seen them a lot. This thing right here is an interesting piece of kit. So this is not designed, and some of you guys who have been in the military know exactly what this is. Uh, this is not designed as like a, like a beach towel or anything, but what's cool about this is it was designed for helicopters in the desert. Um, so dirt won't come through it and you can land dirt and dirt again just won't come through it but if it gets on it like sand on it it will go through it it's freaking crazy technology but it works uh, i have no idea how it works but it does work and uh, laying out here in the dirt that's kind of a good thing so i use that as well sometimes bags this is my ammo bag it's a kanai bag that's been a good bag i ripped part of it again everything is getting thrashed by steel here but i keep all the common loads that i normally shoot out here just a bunch of it in here uh, because I never know what I'm gonna need. And I keep all the match ammo that we shoot. So for any accuracy testing, it stays in this bag and 22 stays on the sides. Um, but yeah, it's been a good bag. Again, I beat it to death and it's still here. So good on Kanai for that. Another bag here, this is the Hazard 4 bag. So there's actually probably interesting stuff to you guys in this bag. This is kind of like my range equipment bag. Um, this bag's been great as well. It's held up really well. These bags aren't cheap though. It's one of the downsides of them. Hazard 4, their stuff's expensive. All right, so in here we got earplugs, um, staples for the staple gun. 
uh, tools, uh, screwdrivers, things like that, markers for marking targets. This thing right here, which is the uh, Magnumatic AK uh, front sight tool adjuster, it's the best one on the market, period. Uh, end of statement. Uh, that's all there is to it. If you guys are looking for an AK adjustment tool, this is the one I've broken every other one. Uh, the good news is Tapco will replace a broken one. And uh, if you're cool with that, then Tapco's cool too, works. Uh, we got extra batteries in here. Any kind of sight adjustment tool you can think of. So AR-15 sight adjustment tools. Uh, we also have uh, HK sight adjustment tools. All of those sorts of things are in there. And up to the top, similar stuff, uh, Ear Pro. Tapco site adjustment tool, which I just mentioned, markers, those sorts of things, and actually some detent sense, uh, just spare parts for ARs and things like that that commonly break are in there as well. See, this is why I didn't think it was a very exciting video, but again, you guys asked for it, so here it is. All right, so in this pouch, uh, electrical tape, because you always need electrical tape. These are the uh, Walker's Bluetooth uh, silencer ear set. If you guys sometimes will see me when I'm shooting uh, and it looks like I'm not wearing ear pro or something like that, uh, I'm actually wearing these and uh, they're decent. They're not the greatest in terms of NRR, but shooting suppressed with those is perfectly safe in my opinion. A couple different wrenches, depending on sizes uh, for opening various things and mounting optics out here, um, sunscreen. Uh, we also have a bug spray in there as well, full deep because nothing else works. Not out here in the summer anyway, I can tell you that much. Um, there is that. And then in this compartment, probably more interesting stuff. So super high tech sandbag that we see all the time uh, for shooting groups. Spare earring protection, these are Peltor 6s. Um, and then we have the DeWalt staple gun. This is kind of stuff, if you guys watch my videos a lot, you see this stuff just kind of littered around the range frequently. Um, this is the best staple gun I've used. I use a staple gun professionally. <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is the jam. I've broken like five of them. Uh, paint, of course, for painting targets. And then these binoculars are actually fantastic. Uh, I used to have, actually I still have them, these German precision ones, and these are okay. They actually have really good glass, but they're four power. Um, these are Nikons are a 10 by 42. I think these are pretty darn inexpensive as well. Uh, like they're not like thousand dollar binoculars or anything like that. But with these, you can see almost all uh, groups at a hundred yards. So if you're shooting at a hundred, um, even with five, five, six, if you focus it right, of course, and you have decent vision, uh, me, I can see them at a hundred yards. So that's a big deal. Like, whereas with these, just because of the lack of magnification, you can't, um, but yeah, I really like these. And like I said, everything in here, guys, gets banged around a lot. If it's still here, it's doing well in terms of durability, but these are, these are my go-to. I don't actually know why I even have these in here anymore. I probably won't after this video. Um, uh, gloves are Magpul gloves. I think I said that earlier. Uh, we keep up gloves because of suppressors and other types of various hot stuff that we get out here. It comes in handy a lot. Um, we got two of those in there, of course, up up. And uh, tape measures, which we use a lot, of course, measuring group. Milwaukee Tools, by the way, shout out to them. Whoever runs their marketing department is a viewer of the channel, and they actually sent out like various tools that you guys are going to see here, and this was one of them. Um, packed shot timer. Um, I don't use shot timers a ton on the channel for viewers to see. However, when I'm trying to increase my skills personally, it's an invaluable tool um, for sure. So shot timer. What else we got in here? More bug spray, and that's it for that bag. This bag's from Sabre Equipment as well. I use it in a manner it's totally not designed for, and I'm sure they uh, don't appreciate me showing it like that here in this video, but this is actually a really cool designed bag. It just doesn't kind of work with what I do. Um, but this bag is designed to fit a protected sleeve of pistols in it, and it's a really cool design. If you're going to a range with multiple pistols, it's a fantastic bag for that. Good backpack. Um, like any of the other uh, Savior stuff that you guys are going to see here, it's really well made. Uh, absolutely. And uh, they take good feedback. Like I said, I had something to do with the design of that uh, shooting mat. So up front is where I put my spent mags um, on top here. Pistol mags, as you guys can see. And then there's another compartment up top where I put anything that's not an AR-15 rifle mag. So those all go in here. Um, if we're shooting like PSLs like we have out here today, all those mags go in there. And then on the bottom, this is actually the portion I was talking about that normally that pistol sleeve goes in. But again, I just took it out because <laughs> I wanted it for a ton of mags. And that's what we have here. So these are any kind of AR mags go in this pouch here. And uh, that's what we have here. So there is that. And that's that bag. This bag, 
I don't think is that expensive, but this one, because of the amount of weight in here, this bag pretty much always weighs 50 to 80 pounds because it's just chock full of ammo. Um, it's doing well, so good on them for that. Shovel, we have two shovels out here today. Normally we only have one, but I use a shovel for filling uh, targets, which people always ask about. And then sometimes, um, we have two spots in this field that are bermed up that you guys, I don't think can see on camera the way we do the filming, um, but just touch up berms and things like that. Um, especially when we get new uh, farm hands out here because they tend to mess stuff up um, if they're new, so that's cool. Um, and then we have the cold steel shovel, which is all the way in the back. I love that thing, that thing's always out here. That is, it never comes out of my truck, it's fantastic. Um, here on the side of my Tacoma here, we have a little side kit um, and then we have med kit in there like a improvised one there's also a med kit a nice standard IFAC in the truck and then we have four more um, uh, tourniquets so I'm a fan of the cat tourniquets or soft tea um, I know there's other ones out there I'm not a medical expert I just know what I know from my years of experience um, those are the two I like and the two I recommend those are the two that are in this truck um, and then we have some chest seals um, there's not a ton of other stuff. There's a little bit of gauze in the, um, the one inside the truck. Um, but I'm not, we're pretty isolated out here. Like the nearest hospital here is probably a little over an hour. Um, but if need be, uh, there is like helicopter access here and stuff like that. So if something really happened that we needed to sustain life for a while, uh, that would be kind of rare. Um, but in my opinion, the two most important pieces of medical kit, especially for shooters, are those two things, chest seals and tourniquets for sure. Um, all right, other bags. This bag right here is a Kanai bag. I have a full video on this rifle bag. Um, most of these rifle bags are gonna be chock full of guns and ammo and magazines every time out. Uh, ammo in boxes goes in this, but the rest of them will go in here. Again, I already have a full video on that Kanai bag, so I'm not gonna really go over it. This is a Survivor, or Savior, excuse me, if I keep saying that wrong, bag. One of the 36 inches, big giant pouch up front. I think I actually have a gun in there right now. Nope, just scratch that. That's full of shotgun ammo for the uh, Beretta 1301. It's got these good side pouches here if you wanna throw mags in there, and this one has PSL mags in there. And again, 36 inch bag, black multi-cam. They offer these in tons of different colors. Let's see if there's any other unique-ish bags out here. Uh, yeah, this one here is gonna be their standard savior. The rest of these are all savior, just along the same standard lineup. This one is one of their bigger bags. Uh, they make them obviously in a number of different sizes. I like this design, it's just, it's solid overall. You can put uh, four mags, like Air 15 mags in here. You can put uh, eight in here if you want to, same four here. And this little compartment here, a lot of sub guns will fit in here. I have it loaded up with uh, magazines right now, but a lot of these, when I, when I have pistols out here, I don't know if I have any. No, I don't have any in this case. Um, these portions here are Velcro, so you can put a pistol in there and not have to worry about it getting dinged up by like metal mags and stuff like that. That might also be in there. If you guys are running like AR pistols, a lot of them will fit in here as well. Um, gigantic coffin mag for the AK-74 for some reason is in here. And sorry to cut in here on the video, but through the magic of video editing, it is now about seven hours later, and I realized I left some stuff out because uh, I just went through my normal range process and didn't talk about some of these things. So to jump in, uh, we have this guy here. This is a Nikon Monarch 3000. Uh, there's a lot of really cool features in this little guy here. The biggest one is that it allows the reticle, when you hold it up, to be stabilized it's electronically stabilized within the unit so typically you know if you have a target out at distance and you come up there you range it you're shaking right because the human hand does which is why most um of most range fighters rather can be mounted on a bipod because if you're actually shooting out really long range like beyond like eight nine hundred yards uh you're probably not gonna get a reading when you're shaking there with your hand this thing digitally stabilizes it which is awesome it also has other good features um, in terms of taking into effect elevation you can get an average of readings there's a ton of different stuff going on in here but that thing also good to go additionally these two things this is just soap antibacterial soap and then these hero wipes here along with the water that you guys saw earlier. It's kind of like my lead decontamination uh, type of uh, process that I go through out here. Uh, for normal people, that's probably not such a huge deal, but I shoot you know, thousands of rounds every week, so it's, it's a big deal. I try to minimize it as much as I can. Uh, also wipe off my face with it, because that stuff, particularly when you're shooting suppressed, is getting all up in your grill. Cooler, 
This is the guy I typically have out here. It's been in a bunch of videos actually in the background. This is the Arctic. Uh, it's their cheap model for them, but I would say that compared to like like a like a Coleman or something that you're gonna get at Walmart, this thing absolutely keeps everything way cooler without question than those do. So for this type of like non heavy duty type cooler, it's very, very good. And this bag here, uh, typically my computer's in here, so that way if something comes up and like a viewer sends me a deal or something like that, I can post it. Uh, we actually do have on my cell network anyway, I can get Wi-Fi signal out here. Um, so it's not, it's not uncommon for me to do that. This is a Beretta bag. I didn't have big hopes for it. There's actually probably going to be a full review on this bag because I really do like it a lot. Um, but it's a great little bag. Comes in several colors, great padding, great design. Has our computer slash hydration uh, spot back there. You can tie down any sort of like uh, sleeping mats, things like that. Um, it's a bag, again, I didn't expect anything from it to be great because I thought it was going to be kind of cheesy like Beretta's, a lot of Beretta's like old school clothing line was. Um, but they're doing good things there and uh, making progress. The only thing, the way that these ties are attached is completely jacked up from the factory side to redo them all. I mean, that's a simple thing, but I already told Beretta they needed to fix that because it's a problem. But otherwise we have, uh, as you can see, the webbing out here on the front and the sides if you want to attach stuff on there. And again, I'll do a full review, but I wanted to make sure I got those items covered. And then I also wanted to cover something that people will comment on a lot. Uh, when I'm out here, I'm always uh, carrying a pistol on my hip and people are like, oh, what do you think you're gonna get? A shootout in the Wild West out there or something? I'm like, no, but again, I'm in a relatively remote location here. So I also have a ton of expensive equipment with me from cameras to firearms and I'm a prime target and that is not lost on me. I typically I'm out here by myself every now and then somebody else would be out here with me, but it'd be fairly easy to try to get the jump on me here and steal my stuff. Um, so I always have a loaded pistol on my hip. I'll almost always wearing electronic hearing protection for that reason as well amongst many other reasons. And I always have a zeroed and loaded either rifle or uh, in this case, AR pistol with me. This is a, uh, a build gun with an arrow, uh, upper lower, handguard, Faxon, uh, pencil barrel. And uh, this is a Gemtech Trek on there, a light and aim point pro, for example, SP tactical brace. But point is those things are always here and uh, always ready just for the security aspect of it. Additionally, one of the things that the gentleman who owns this farm asks of me is that whenever I see hogs, just to shoot them uh, because they're starting to get here and be a problem. So again, having that loaded rifle caliber uh, gives me the ability to extend that range and uh, lay down some lethality if I need it. So yeah, that's it. All right, back to the video. I think is really it in terms of uh, range gear. Obviously in the truck, we have a target uh, a bunch of targets rather. Um, also another camera. I'm trying to think if there's anything else in there. Spare batteries. Lots of batteries are in the truck for all the different stuff we use out here. And honestly, I think that's, I think that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else that's too fancy out here. If you guys are still watching at this point in the video, I truly appreciate it. I can't imagine what would be so enthralling. But again, like I said, I get so many requests for this video, I decided just to knock it out. So that is our range gear. That's what I use, um, why I use it, those sorts of things. Simple video and done. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you're new here and you like this type of video, this is not what I typically do. Um, I typically talk about all the stuff that's in here. Um, but if you like it, regardless, I go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Either way, guys, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.